Hello, everybody, and welcome to In the Doll World, a show spotlighting the passion and the people of the doll community. With your host, me, Georgette Taylor, former vice president and co-founder of Big Beautiful Dolls, and Tammy Fisher, owner of Curiosity Dolls and Collectibles. Join us as we talk to and feature fascinating new dolls and doll artists, from avid collectors to repainters, redesigners, bloggers, authors, filmmakers, and all the people in between as they share their journeys, give us glimpses into their processes and what propels their passion and drive that help to keep the doll world moving and shaking. Here are your hosts, Georgette and Tammy. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us on In the Doll World. I am here today with my wonderful, beautiful host, Miss Georgette Taylor. Hey. Hey. <laughs> and we have a special guest today, Mr. Christian. Hi. Hey. Hi. Hello, he everyone. One. Hey, sweetheart. We are so excited to have you here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you are one of my most favorite doll artists. Oh my God. I mean, I, I love your, <laughs> you know, your art and... You are one of those people who's been popping up in some of the interviews with some of the other doll artists. So it's like, you know, wow. you were, yeah. Thank you. There, Thank you to those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had a, a brief conversation with Joey Versa. He's credited with mm -hmm. being the first doll artist to make a 3D printed doll. Wow. I saw yeah. it and they were really, really great. And like, I love the style of it, you know? Yeah, Mary Magpies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's like he, vintage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he he spoke about you. We we had a oh brief conversation in his interview about you, and it's like I gotta reach out and see what's going on over here because this, <laughs> this young man is really getting the attention of you know some people in the in the game. Thank so you thank guys. you guys. Thank you yeah, everyone. Thank you, for yeah, coming. thank you. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, we're excited. It's excited too. Yeah, yeah, we're meeting some cool people. So. Let's get started where we normally mm -hmm. start. And that is, tell us about your history with dolls. Yeah. Well, you know, as a K child, um, <laughs> I've always, growing up, I've always obviously loved dolls. I already knew. There was no question about it. I grew up with my grandmother also. So I would say she was my first fashion icon, you know. Um, and my aunt she she's in the states and i was we were in the philippines and she had leftover dolls like barbies like from the 80s or 90s and i remember playing with them breaking them though because i think i played with them when i was too young where you don't care about toys at all um so i broke them and then when i came to an age where i appreciate dolls and i was like i want dolls they're already broken. The neck Aww. pegs were gone. <laughs> um, yeah. So, you know, at that time, I can't just be like, can I buy a doll? So I was just like in the shadows playing with these broken toys, <laughs> oh. um, putting makeup on them. And yeah, I mean, it's always been a fascination of mine playing with dolls and dressing up dolls. And then coming to the States, I discovered BJDs like the mm -hmm. specifically the Asian made ball joint dolls, like from Fairyland. And mm -hmm. I was like, wait a minute, you can change their eyes. You can give them makeup. You can change the clothes. And the clothes weren't like traditional, like a, a top and a skirt. They were like princess type <laughs> of clothing. I mean, they were very Japanese Harajuku mm -hmm. fashion type of, styles mm -hmm. and I was so fascinated by them I would look up YouTube videos of people ordering them and it was very romanticized even though they were like I order this from fairyland and it took a year to get here but now <laughs> it's here because you know um these dolls they're not mass produced you have to yeah. pre-order them um and they're made of resin so they have to do all of that. And it was just so fascinating when people were ordering them. And I was just like sitting there watching all of these unboxing videos. Um, and then re then I think I stumbled upon th those the same owners doing the same face up technique on mm -hmm. monster high dolls. Mm -hmm. And that's where like the BJD techniques and 
the toy dolls kind of came together in, you know, in my head and obviously for others. One of the people that I credit the most where I learned was um, Andrea from Nicole's Dreams on YouTube. Um, there's this blog, No Nap Time, mm-hmm. um, and they have tremendous, amazing tutorials on how they do this. You know, the materials that you need, Mr. Super Clear and all of that. And I was like, oh my gosh, I need to do this. And so yeah. I did. <laughs> I, I'm going to interrupt you. I should have interrupted you yeah. probably earlier, but I, I loved hearing what you were saying. Explain Harajuku to people who don't know what it is. So it's just, um, it's just a fashion, it's a street in Japan. So it's like where you guys can just dress the way you want to dress. And I'm trying to think of a similarity or a comparison here in the U.S., but I really can't. Yeah, I, any maybe like maybe San Francisco, mm-hmm, maybe that's New what York. I was thinking. Mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. so Harajuku fashion is just an umbrella term for so many other subcultures in them. That's what they call it in terms of style. And a lot of the Harajuku that I have seen has been really colorful. So yeah. it's people are playing with like lots of either pastels or mm. really vivid colors well know? because in japan as a culture i think and i may be wrong but i believe that um uh, people go to school six days a week uh-huh. like mm-hmm. including saturday i believe so there's only one day for them to really go all all mm-hmm. all dressed up right mm-hmm. if i'm okay. correct yeah and i think that's the sunday where everyone just meets up in that street of harajuku dressed the way they want to dress. I mean, some of these are obviously to Western culture borderline costumes, you know? Mm -hmm. So think of like just drag queens or or like cosplayers coming together. Mm -hmm, It's like a convention Mm -hmm. almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's so many subcultures like Lolita, which is always kind of referenced with the movie, but but it's not, um, where it's all like princess dresses, cupcake dresses, and so on. So it's Yeah, it's lots fun. of tutus. Just, I mean, the, the, yeah, the big yeah, yeah, standout yeah. dresses, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Victorian-inspired. Yeah. Um, yeah. Those are the ones I love, um, but uh-huh. I do know the ones you were referencing with the colorfuls, rainbowy. Yeah. Um, those are, I think, deco-inspired. Deco but yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. So if you guys are, like, wanting eccentric fashion definitely look up Harajuku fashions and all yeah. of the subcultures. Thank you. I just want to make sure that people knew what that was. You were telling us about you started with the Monster High. You saw people doing Monster High and the yeah. BJD dolls started, and how they were doing the face-ups. Yeah. So I started with, well, at first, because, you know, when you're trying to, when you're starting something, you don't In terms of materials, you don't want to go all out sometimes. Mm -hmm. And for repaint, it really is about the Mr. Super Clear. Are you guys you guys are familiar with that, right? Yes, it's it's a spray varnish. Yeah, Mm yeah, yeah. And so that was just very, very prevalent in the face up community, like when they're doing the face ups. And at first, I was like, you know what, I can do this with something else. And so I bought my first Cleo Denial from Monster High. And I bought, I believe it was Krylon. And it's it's used for, to spray um, canvases, I believe, okay. um, to set the canvases. So I tried that and it kind of worked where I was able to draw on it. But over time, it, it made the rubber, the vinyl face really, really sticky. So I was like, oh my gosh, it just, it's ruined. I need to actually get Mr. Super Clear. <laughs> yeah. But it's expensive, you guys. It's like it's ex- 20 it, to 30 sometimes. Yeah, it's um, expensive and it's toxic. You have to make sure yes. that you use it with the right um, ventilation. Ventilation, and, and, yeah. Well, I mean, you need first, to use it smartly. Yeah, well, at first I was uh, I was doing the whole keep your, um, don't breathe, <laughs> keep your <laughs> oh. breath, and then run, run as fast as you can back to the house. <laughs> That's honestly what I did um, before getting a mask. Um, So yeah, you guys, if you're trying to repaint with Mr. Super Clear, wear a mask. Thank you for that. Thank you. And get get an expensive one because the particles are really small. You have to change the filter um, of mask to use. Yeah, Mm -hmm. don't go out here with your um, (laughs) COVID-19 mask mask and think that you got it. You need something much more than that. 
but see, I think you can you can combat COVID nineteen with the Mister Super Clear mask. Maybe. Okay, now that that, that now Maybe. that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> I would use that mask for more things. Mm-hmm. Mister Super Clear. <laughs> So you, so when you saw these, uh, when you saw them redoing the repaints, and that that is that how you really got started with your art is just following them. Were you yeah. artistic before? I mean, when you were playing with your dolls, were you doing faces, or you were just redressing them? No, um, I was just redressing them. Okay. Um, you know, for me, dolls were just an expression, um, just to play with. But I've always loved customization. I'm I'm a gamer at heart. I love The Sims. And that's where you really are able mm-hmm. to create virtual characters, you know? Yes. Yeah. And I, I did draw. I draw a lot. Um, I like sketching. And at the time, I never really have... You know when, you're, when you love art, but you don't necessarily know what direction to mm-hmm. go with? Because mm-hmm. um, I've done digital media, digital art. I've done sketching. I've done pastels. But none of them are like, I can do this all the time, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. And when I did the dolls, at the time, it was just kind of like, ooh, I want to make this character because it's, I've never seen it in a doll before, like Mm -hmm. in a doll form. And that's kind of how I got started was making all of these characters that I loved growing up Mm -hmm. or love currently. And I just never see them in doll form. I mean, they Mm -hmm. could have action figures, but that's not the same as doll in terms right. of style and scale. So I think that's how it was. I mean, when I first repainted the Cleo Denial, it wasn't to create a different character. It was just to, in my head, oh, I want to give her my style of eyes. If you are able to draw, because I was very confident going into it, I was like, I know how to draw. Like, I can draw a good eye. But drawing <laughs> on a 3D face on a doll is... right very very different <laughs> and it's okay. just it's not the same so then, then it, it it's not the same times. as drawing it on a flat piece of paper yeah right? or, no, or a canvas no, no, no. right yeah no. mm-hmm. um and i think that's why monster high and ever after high are good practice faces because specifically ever after high they do have a flatter face mm-hmm. um where the eyes aren't really molded because the monster high the eyes are molded a little okay. bit. Um, mm-hmm. So ever after high, you can go crazy with any eye style that you want. So it's just really fun. Oh, um, but yeah, that's, that's how I started, and I recorded it on YouTube. I've been on YouTube since 2010, but I've just been uploading like random stuff, trying to make it big <laughs> <laughs> on YouTube. So I had like dance covers, I had vlogs, and all of that, but none of them were like none of them really picked up. And so when I started sharing my art it did and so i just continued i'd like to ask you a question and we mm-hmm. asked this of um you know like all the artists mm-hmm. are you able to make a living with your art yeah i'm able to like through youtube though specifically mm-hmm. right um i do sell some dolls um but that's when that's only if i need space um <laughs> in my <laughs> doll room or if the dolls in my head would arrive safely because some of the dolls that I made now recently are very fragile and I'm Mm -hmm. like I don't know if you're gonna survive this girl (laughs) (laughs) the transit I don't think it'll survive um and I think that's that's why I hesitate to Mm -hmm. sell and at the same time you never know how the the owner the new owner will take care of them because we hold we hold our dolls very very gently you know, we don't we don't touch the faces or we hold them by the legs only. So there's in my head, there's just certain ways that I would do things that I don't think others would. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my God, you might not be treated well. <laughs> <laughs> so like giving your giving your child away to somebody else. <laughs> right. And so oh. when I did sell, I had like some mini cards. I'm like, don't touch the faces, brush <laughs> them if they get dusty, something like that. Um yeah <laughs> that's good to know because people pay yeah. hundreds of dollars you know and sometimes even more than that for dolls yeah. so yeah. you need to know how to take care of them yeah well you know if they do if i i did realize that if they do if they are spending hundreds of dollars on these dolls i'm sure they would right know at least they would have an idea on how to actually take care of them and how to handle right. them correctly yeah but it's still hard. It's still hard to give them up. That's what you're oh, saying. Yeah. So I wanted yeah. to ask you, when you mentioned that you were on um, YouTube uh, since what you said, 
2010, 2010. Mm-hmm. 2010. And then you, you were adding new things uh, to see if anything would click for you, mm-hmm. right? If anything mm-hmm. would happen. And then you started doing your, your repaints. When did mm-hmm. you start doing the repaints? How long was it before you, were, before you started that oh, from 2010? I should have researched this. Um, I believe it was <laughs> 2016. Right. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. Yeah, 2016, maybe 2015. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it was, okay. it was, it was uh, most of my dolls. I think I've only had maybe three that I did not record. Like I did not put oh, on wow. YouTube. Okay. So most of my methods, like my, the evolution of my mm-hmm. skill is definitely documented on YouTube. <laughs> that's, that's great cool. though. Yeah, that's yeah. really great. Excuse me. Because mm-hmm. I yeah, didn't is... document obviously my first one because I was testing it out. Yeah, I think there's like only a handful, maybe five dolls that I didn't record. So the rest mm-hmm. of every everything was made in the intention of, of making a video. You know, that was the whole intention of the repaint is to repaint this. And I think the reason also why I had a momentum going is because Ever After High was at its peak at the mm-hmm. time. And that's where they had um, new characters all the time. They would create new dolls. And I was like, oh my gosh, well, I want to make, I want to give her my style. Okay, so 2014, I, I scrolled, I had, I scrolled all the way. 2014 <laughs> was my first repaid video um, okay, of, of Raven Queen from Ever After High. But yeah, so every time they come up with new characters, I'm like, okay, I want to make I want to give her my face, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So it just kind of started building up. And then I was like, I want to make, I have an extra of this certain doll. Let me turn her into a different character. So yeah, it was just really, really fun. And like I said, I was watching all other doll videos and getting inspired by the process of it. And so, yeah, I tried my best to make it as tutorial of a video as possible, but I'm not sure if I'm a good teacher. <laughs> no, I mean, I I, think, I've seen them. Yeah, I think you're yeah, good. Yeah, I, I think you're a good, good teacher. Job. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you explain why I don't, you're doing what I don't, you're doing. I don't think you would have that many followers if you were not a good teacher. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, because I don't think I can, uh, I, I hate doing voiceovers for videos. Um, um, so I'm like, you know, I, you do this, you do that. I don't really... <laughs> But, you everybody, is, you, but everybody you, learns differently too, you know. Yeah, and, yeah, that's it's, true. So yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I was I was very impressed when I saw your uh, your videos. Yeah. Well, you know, like, oh, that works. Like any other art, there's no one right way to do it. Right. So yeah. th- they can just get one thing from my video, and I'll be really happy if they get you know inspired by one technique that I right. did and that they're doing. And I'm like, okay, I did my job. Like I, I saw the one that you did for the Powerpuff Girls. I have, I have, <gasps> because I have, I have a confession. My son loved the Powerpuff Girls. I'm not going to, he, he may not be wanting me to say that, but I'm just going to say <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> my hey. my youngest son who actually lives in Japan right now but he Aww. loved the Powerpuff Girls I remember mean, he was nice. growing up I'm like why do you like the Powerpuff Girls he loved the Powerpuff well, Girls so is he, when is I he, saw uh, it I just fell out I was just like this yeah. is so cool <laughs> was it the original or the reboot no, it was the, no, the original. He's twenty. He's oh, almost yeah, thirty. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha, yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, the original was more action based. You know, yes, it, it was. was. Badass, mm-hmm. so. Yeah, it really was. Yeah. That's what he so. was come. And I mean, like, oh, I'd be like, okay. But so when I saw you doing the Powerpuff Girl, I was like, I was, I was excited. It took me back to to him watching it and, and enjoying it. And then I, I loved your Betty Boop because I love Betty Boop, and so Aww. it was, so it was great. I just, I just found, I just found your art to be really really beautiful you do beautiful work you You really do and see that's why i like creating these already made characters because it's my way to kind of fangirl right fangirl (laughs) fanboy (laughs) um fanboy with them um because i growing up i never really connected with other people who would watch the the same shows the same animes or you know read the same comics as i did and so making these established characters from my childhood or even currently it's kind of like a way to fan boy with other people who has seen it or likes the character you know mm-hmm, um, yeah. and so that's why i just like to take my spin on it and technically i mean all of these most of the d- dolls that i have made are fan art so they're great yeah. i love them <laughs> yeah yeah we do so yeah. i wanted to ask you a question you've gone through this whole thing with youtube when youtube was talking about removing yeah. th- things that were geared toward children yes. and so here you are working with dolls mm-hmm. not necessarily being geared toward children because i don't mm-hmm. see your videos that way but how did how did that go for you what 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 was that like 
It was it was a crazy time. Like definitely didn't know what the future was gonna uphold. Um, I was like, oh my god, I need to change my characters because some of them were actually, I mean, literally from my childhood, like you know, cartoons, they're cartoons. So it was just crazy. And YouTubers, all they we every YouTuber who were a, a, like a kid at heart, like. They had to fight that because they were saying that anything that's cartoon will be transported to the kids app. But we were, I guess, the argument is that these cartoons were made years ago. So the so the people who watch these cartoons are now mm-hmm. adults, right? Mm-hmm. But you know they're still cartoons. But over overall, the whole system was just outdated. So right now, I think the only ones that are actually made for kids are like nursery nursery rhymes or like actual obvious child content. Mm-hmm. If I'm mm-hmm. correct, yeah. Okay. Um. So so far, uh, I think my my videos are good. Um. We all of the doll community. We had a group chat. We were like we're going to put a warning in front of our video saying that our materials are toxic. <laughs> we are going to be using... That would work. <laughs> yeah, we're using knives. We are using um, toxic clay um, and sprays. Um, so I've, so some people are still doing that. I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to emphasize the materials as much as I can. So, so far, it's good. So it's just, it's a hit or miss platform. I'm really, I mean, I'm thankful for it. I'm thankful for the people who follows me. And I I mean, you know, I wouldn't be here literally. I mean, it's so cliche, but it, literally you won't be here without the people who, who backs you up and follows you. So I'm really, really thankful that through all of this um, YouTube mess that they're still there, you know? Yeah, we're still there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And bringing our friends to come and check you out. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> we got you back. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So what do you have planned um, coming up here? More fan art. Um, I've been trying to do original characters, but in my head, I'm like, I don't know if they're going to be exciting. And sometimes most of them are a little too sexual too. So I'm like, okay, either... I make that and it's fun, but YouTube might think it's too sexual. So maybe not. But yeah, more characters from my childhood. I love them. I love I love anime and video games. So I'm trying to do that. And I'm also trying to make dolls from people's requests. They they want me to to continue the Powerpuff Girls to uh, okay. Yeah. Um <laughs> so there's Sorry. some because I'm trying to do I used to do like stories at the end of my videos. Mm-hmm. Um, that's literally my way of actually playing with them. Uh-huh. And I kind of had the storyline with the Powerpuff Girls and why Miss Bellum is missing. So it's like my take on it. So yeah, <laughs> more of those. Well, my daughter. Hopefully. Oh, I was going to say, if, you, if, if you're taking requests, my daughter loves CL Phantom Hive. So. Uh... <gasps> oh, yeah. From uh, Black <laughs> Butler, right? Yeah. Black Butler, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I tried she watching that him. and there's something, I don't know why I, I think I've only seen like five episodes, maybe not even five, maybe less, okay. but it could, I guess it just didn't hook me, but yeah. I definitely love the character designs. I really love them. Yeah. My daughter did a, I'll send it, send you the information from it. My daughter yeah. did a competition. She's a cosplayer and she did oh. a demon CL and nice. she did, I can't remember if it's 10 or 12 foot wide wings that are articulated. <gasps> so wow. I'll send it to you. Yeah, are they like really uh, mechanical? Cool. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, oh my were. God. Mm-hmm. That's open amazing. And close. Yeah. Nice, I'll, I'll nice. send it to you. She's, my daughter's a serious cosplayer. <laughs> nice. Here, I, I learned a lot from cosplayers too, because, you know, I, I do drag sometimes. So I know drag technique that I sometimes put on my dolls and I kind of cosplayed before, so I do that too. And okay. I feel like all of these worlds, they just need to mix. They just need to yeah, merge. There's because a lot the of overlapping. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of overlapping techniques, but they want to define it as just for cosplay or just for drag. Yeah. But I see, like, I love it when I see drag queens interpret, like, superheroes, mm-hmm. because it's definitely, like, the hyper glamorized right. Right. heroes. Version of that. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
like the, you'll see like Wonder Woman, but her wig is like Marie Antoinette big. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I love them so much. It's just awesome. hyper glamorized. And I mean, obviously hyper feminine sometimes um, depending on the drag that they do, but yeah, it's just fun. And I follow both type of techniques on Instagram. I follow a lot of like cosplay wig makers Mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh my God, this is absolutely insane how they style all of these wigs that drag queens would definitely appreciate. Yeah. Yeah, And obviously I try to do that with the dolls. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. We, yeah. my daughter and I spend a good amount of time just go, oh, come and look at this, you know, so we see lots of different, you know, people doing things and, yeah. and love with Violet Tchotchke. And, oh my God. I have know. a tattoo on, I have the tattoo of her on my arm. She's my favorite. She's amazing. She definitely got me inspired with, um, like, I love drag, but I never understood. She opened the world for me in terms of merging fashion um, drag and also pinup and fetish culture. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, this is so, so good, you know? Yeah. Um, and it just, it just started. It, everything just started. Uh, do, do you guys know Suresh and why on YouTube? No, I don't, I don't know if I, I don't. do. Uh-uh. You, ne- you guys need to interview him. He okay, is we'll look him up. so amazing. I will send you guys details. Okay. He's okay. amazing. He got me into Silkstone. He okay, yeah. He got m- me started on the obsession with collecting silk stones okay. because he is such a good salesman. <laughs> he co- <laughs> he's a doll collector, and he would do these reviews on YouTube. Um, he also sews, and I believe he repaints sometimes. But yeah, like the way he romanticized the fabrics, he romanticized how a dart is made what a Dorsey pump is, all of this, I'm like, oh my God, this is mind boggling. I didn't know that Barbie started with like the Dior new look type of look because I only knew Barbie with the superstar, like the 90s Barbie. That's the, right. yeah. that's my childhood Barbie. Yeah. And also the Barbie of today, like the contemporary ones. So I never knew that Silkstone started with a Silkstone, like the original one. I just did my research because of him and I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. So definitely (laughs) one of my bucket lists is to even have a build Lily. That's, it's like one, a build Lily and then maybe a number one Barbie. Although I don't think I'll appreciate it as much. (laughs) She'll probably be in the box. And that's where you want to put her. Yeah, Yeah, that's that's, that's money. But I definitely want a build Lily. I want I want Barbie's origins. (laughs) Have you, did you know um, Julian... Kalinowski. Um, I just listened to the podcast, so yes. okay. <laughs> so Julian's dolls look a lot like Bill Lily. Yeah, I saw. I saw the. Yeah. Um, I researched after the the podcast. I was like, oh yeah, okay, they're amazing, and they have like the vintage styles as well. So yeah, those are some of the goals in terms of older vintage bar, um, dolls. They're great. <laughs> yeah, this has been a great interview. We haven't spoken to anyone before about what's happened with um, with YouTube and, you know, with the kids and not and how that's affecting the artists. So thank you for mm-hmm. updating us on that. Yeah, I mean, and hopefully it gets better um, for YouTubers because, I mean, we love the platform. Um, yeah. Definitely. It's such a mixture of people and it really is you it brings people together i i get surprised every time i get like an international comment that i don't understand uh, i'm like oh my god that's amazing <laughs> like i have an audience somewhere over there so it's just really really great and obviously it's hard because art censorship is such a thing mm-hmm. online yeah. Because you, obviously you can't control the audience. You don't know who's there. You don't know what age they are. Right. You know, the yeah. kids are there. So yeah. even though it is art, there's still some guidelines that you do have to follow. Yes. And yeah. us as artists, it's hard to do that. We understand it, but it's hard to control the, the art. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. That's um, true. Because I've seen um sculpt sculptures um where they do like realistic, actually realistic human bodies, like you know, the nipples are there, the body rolls are there, like literally realistic, anatomically correct type of beautiful bodies. 
and it's sad that they are like censored. And by censored, I don't mean like literally pu- putting a blur. Censored by not making money off of it, being demonetized, um, and not being completely shared by the YouTube's algorithm. Because that's just, yeah. you know that's the thing. Like when you see all of those random recommendations that they that they put out, it's like you want one of that to be your videos, you know? Yeah, I, I for me, what's sad about that is we have all this violence and gore. I mean, you can see yeah. people getting their head cut off, <clears throat> excuse me, yeah. cut off, blown up, all the stuff you can see, but you can't see a naked body. What's sexual about a naked body? Everybody's you know, got a body. You know, thank you for bringing that up again. That was actually one of our heated talks when um, in our group chats for the doll people. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm like, how are some of these YouTubers doing these violent pranks? And they're not funny. They're not, none yeah. of them are mostly funny. And they're getting all of these publicity, all of these views. And obviously, it just, uh, it's just the d- generation, I think, and what people actually like. Um, so that's just a society problem. But You know, you can have that. That's fine. But don't censor the artists for making art. So that's kind of why it was really, really frustrating to see everyone gets the glory for, you know, problematic things. (laughs) Yeah. And us YouTubers who are doing art or sharing fun and, you know, lighthearted stuff are getting demonetized for it. So that was the frustrating part. Definitely. But, you know, yeah. we're, we're doing our best to, to um, evolve with the, the system. We're tr- doing our best to work within the guidelines. Yeah. So for me, I was definitely thinking that if I was to make a hyper, if it was like almost a really naked doll, like hyper stylistic type of doll, I would probably have to upload two types of videos, one censored and one uncensored. Um, yeah. That might work out. So hopefully it does in the future. And yeah, because I'm trying to do more realistic type of bodies. I tried to, I've been wanting to do like a really fully figured type of doll, like Miss Georgette's doll and to do articulation with bigger dolls. I tried to do it with the Ursula doll that I made, um, Uh but I had to just make her kind of like a sculpture because um, I was having... Uh, material issues we couldn't we couldn't go out and we couldn't things were closed (laughs) during that time so but hopefully I can able I was I'm able to do more fully figure um, type of dolls because those are really really needed right now um, for Mm -hmm. you know just for as a society we need to see that be normalized and more you know more diversity hopefully yeah, hopefully that'll that'll be mm. the case. The the good thing is that people are using dolls as a way to, you know, showcase all different types of people. That's yeah. been and, and, and giving them life in different types of mm-hmm. environments. You know, mm-hmm. we just we just talked to somebody who dolls who who help young people code or uh, information about science and things yeah, like that. Yeah, so I mean yeah. it's just like it's it's such a great um canvas to work on creating dolls and so yeah. it gives them opportunity to do so many things. So well it's just a really good medium, you know, it's a 3D object. Mm-hmm. So you can, you can really do so much with it. Um I mean without restrictions of articulation, you can really do so much. Yeah. And for me, I think I've checked the box for queer dolls with my drag queens. Um mm-hmm. and some are trans. And so now I think I have to do body um, diversity, color diversity. Those are what I'm trying to do for the future. And uh, it's just kind of scary. Like for me, I'm very confident making queer dolls because I'm queer. (laughs) Right, right. So I hope that when I make like fully figured dolls or if I make more um, people of color dolls that there's no appropriation, uh, you know, including that. Because that's hard, you know, it's harder to do something that you're not like it's not your culture but you just want to shed beauty in it and you want to kind of give a shout out to it shed light to it so hopefully fingers crossed i will do more (laughs) research on this i'm sure you'll be wonderful at it yeah Yeah, and i think that part of the thing is just being true and honest to that Mm -hmm. culture right yeah as long as you're true and honest 
Yeah. I don't think that there'll be any any issues. I think that the whole appropriation issue is for me, I can't speak mm-hmm. for everyone else. Mm-hmm. A lot of it is disrespect. So yes. you don't understand how a kimono works. Yes. So you go and you make a doll and you put a kimono on her mm-hmm. and you tie your kimono in the front. Wow. Yes. That's mm-hmm. something yeah. very different than a kimono in the back. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. What's with hair too? You know, it's the thing yeah. with the black hair and being right. appropriated. And right. that's why I was doing research on that because I've wanted to I wanted to make a black character and I want to give her natural hair. Right. Um like you know with baby hairs and everything. And I was researching so much about this and why it's appropriated and it's you don't call it box braids because that's not what it is. And I think it is sad that we, and I'm obviously, I'm a part of it. I was in the notion that these are new styles, but they're not. They have already no. existed. <laughs> yeah. They are already from a culture before. So pay homage to that culture. Call yeah. it what they named it, you know? Yeah. And so that's kind of what I, um, for the baby hairs, I believe the runway are using it and they're calling it something type of tendrils, but that it's not, <laughs> it's just baby hairs. It's the edges, you know? Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> so I was researching that and I wanted yeah. to make sure that I have the facts correct and where it all started because hair is a big thing, yes, you know? Yeah. Culture. But oh. you know, the fact that you're doing that work shows that, you know, that you respect that. Some yeah. people, like he's like Tammy said, some people won't even do the work. They'll just assume something or they'll see a picture and say, oh, that's what I'm going to do. But yeah. without doing the work behind that, you know, and what that means. So, yeah. yeah. So, thank, thank those who are putting these people, like educating the people, because obviously I wouldn't have known that they're, they're not box braids. I wouldn't have right. known that if people didn't call um, Kim out. <laughs> I believe <laughs> Kim was referencing someone else who was white. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know her name, but it was a movie and she had that type of braids. So she was like, oh, I'm having that type of braid. And then people started calling her out because that's not even the girl's braids, you know. Mm -hmm, It's it's another another culture's braids. So I'm doing my homework. Hopefully I can do that for future dolls and um, help represent more of that, you know. We appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah, we really do. (laughs) Of course. So this has been a a wonderful show, show. Just wonderful. And thank Thank you you for helping us to understand not only what you're doing as a repainter and Mm -hmm. a customizer, but also expressing how important it is to be true to the culture of other people. Because we're seeing a lot of people who are doing artistic, you know, quote unquote, artistic things that are very offensive, you know, the black Mm -hmm. face. And, Mm -hmm. you know, so thank you for being true to the culture. Yeah, and to not just our culture, but two cultures. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we look forward to speaking with you again at some point. Yeah. Anytime. I'm here every week. <laughs> okay. I, so we, are we, Hexian. Yeah, so we definitely, we. <laughs> we all need an escape right now. So thanks oh, so definitely. much for providing this escape. I've yeah. been, it's been hard to create right now, like in terms of work on the mm-hmm. dolls. It's been very hard. Nothing is inspiring, you know. Um, right. I really appreciate you guys um, inviting me. That's why I was like, oh my God, I, I hope hopefully they invite me sooner because i cannot <laughs> wait any longer <laughs> next time you want to talk just call us up and say hey let's do a show okay yeah. <laughs> no, no, I got you. <laughs> we need that and um yeah. i think the only thing right now that i've been doing i've been trying to post artistic um messages through my instagram so that's the only artistic thing i've been doing mm-hmm. with dolls right i've been doing photography with black lives matter mm-hmm. um nice. mm-hmm. I'm trying because I feel like if I just put a slogan on my Instagram, my audience will just scroll up, you know, right? because I need to know my audience and they follow me for dolls. Yeah. And so I need to kind of merge those two. I need to merge the movement and what I do together. Right. And, um, you know, I'm going to keep doing that until we end (laughs) This, um, people are saying it's a race war. It's not. We're ending a race war that's been going on, you know? And Thank you. So true. understand that. We are fighting for equality. Mm-hmm. We, we are fighting to be Americans. And mm-hmm. this whole Black Lives Matters things is about 
equality. It's people who are just asking to be treated with dignity and respect. That's well, I really think normal. people don't Always. understand that um, America yeah. is not a homogenous country. Right. There's no yeah. one right race here. It's a melting pot right. of every yeah. of everybody. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah, I think people are not understanding that we need to educate also other cultures, not just the ones here in the U.S., but, but it is a global thing. Yes. I mean, yeah. it's the, the it Black happening. Lives Matter movement mm -hmm. is, the protest is everywhere. Yeah. So yes. yeah. Yeah, we have to do our job. Yeah. We have to know our audience and we have to educate them. Mm -hmm. And I was saying to the queer folks that without Black trans people, um, during Stonewall, yeah, that would we be wouldn't no be able. Yeah, we wouldn't be able to wear heels out in public. You won't mm -hmm. be able to say "Hey, Queen" yeah. mm -hmm. freely because of the black trans people who fought those war. Right. And unfortunately, the war is still happening, and yeah. we have to continue the fight. And yeah. right now, social media is the most powerful thing, and not everyone can go protest, but we can definitely reach out to mm -hmm. every single follower that follows us right exactly and spread that message that's right it was very scary like just thinking about politics in my audience because i know that not everyone is queer in my audience and not everyone is right. left you know um so i definitely understood that but i was like but i'm I, this is this. I'm this. This is what I believe in. I need to, uh, you know, show people that. And obviously, it's just what's right. <laughs> We're not fighting to not wear our mask. We're fighting for people to be treated equally. And we need to understand that, like, you look at history and you look at how many things are created by Black people or queer mm -hmm, people or mm -hmm. disabled yeah. people. Yeah. And it's like it's it's crazy. And I think the important thing is to not speak for them, but speak with them. Yeah, it is important. It really is. Just because we, we talk to people who are doll creators and artists and everything like that doesn't mean that they don't have a voice too, you know, about what's yeah. happening and this is what's happening in this world. So, um, and, that, and, and know, that they don't care. And, and, and that well, they don't care, and, right? So yeah. It's affecting all of us. It's just, it's not a white versus black. It's, it's it racist not. versus everyone who's not and <laughs> right. everyone yeah. who's been killed because of their skin color. And... Honestly, it's just really, really hard to even, like I said, it's hard to work. To be yeah. continually to be inspired, right? Yeah, I mm -hmm. get that. Yeah. I get that. And I really, you know, hope that even through all of this, you find your inspiration to, you know, to create your dolls. But I think at the same time, you know, your inspiration is where it's, um, it's going to be more powerful creating the things that you aren't going to be creating during this yeah. time. But at the end of the day, mm -hmm. we just keep moving. You know, we have to mm -hmm. have to have the conversations. And so the, the end of this year will end up being much more. Um, A utopia. I don't know. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> right, Least exactly. Much, much more understanding. Much more empathetic. Of right? the other. Much yeah. more empathetic. So. Yeah. Well, it has really been an amazing interview. This has been thank a very you. interesting. I love this interview. We definitely want to thank you for the interview. And your work is thank beautiful. You. And I'm so excited that you are continuing to do the work that inspires you and uh, and, and inspires us as well. And trust me, people are learning from you every day. So definitely I'm teaching glad. people. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> a lot of things just by listening, you know, just by watching your videos and the art that you that you create and the beautiful dolls <laughs> that you create too. So we love it. I think thank people are so fascinated much. with the process also. They're yeah. Yeah. You know, if, they, if they don't do it because I feel like most people don't do it anyway like they don't <laughs> they don't customize but yeah. they love the process yes so, yeah. you yeah. know Saying what something come to, to life is beautiful yeah. Yeah. yes and that's what you do you do that well so yeah. thank you thank again you. thank you yeah. for being in the doll world oh before we go though just let people know where they can find you you know oh, yes. maybe some people who aren't doll followers you know they listen to the show and they want to know mm -hmm. how they could reach out to you or find your find your work yeah, you guys can uh, follow me at Hextin, that is H-E-X-T-I-A-N, on Instagram and also on YouTube. I make and customize dolls um, of my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> I would love for everyone to come join our coven that's i'm trying to make i'm trying to make this happen but i don't think it's it's catching up <laughs> um, the, the house of hex so um yes oh, nice i like okay. that yeah <laughs> yeah 
if we were if we were a ballroom um if we were a ballroom house it would be a house of hex (laughs) okay cool house of hex i like it it was really really fun and thank you appreciate this and i'm so glad that you guys reached out thank you thank you thank you so much for being in the doll world with us we appreciate it and thank you for listening to the show too and passing it on we really appreciate that thank you guys okay bye. bye 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 Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for listening to In the Dawn World. Me and Tammy really hope that you enjoyed the show. Please don't forget to share our podcast with other doll enthusiasts such as yourself. And if you would like to leave a message on how you enjoyed the show or you want to suggest any guests that we should interview, as well as share information about what's happening in the doll community in your area, please know that you can reach out to us at georgette.inthedollworld at gmail.com and or tammy.inthedawnworld at gmail.com. Also, if you want to see some of the photos we will be posting of our guests, as well as the dolls that they talk about on the show, please visit www.inthedawnworld.com. And until next week, add a little play into your life by collecting a doll, sharing a doll, or giving a doll a home. Until next week, thank you again for listening to In the Doll World.